What are CBDCs and why don't we need them? Easy, because we have Bitcoin. Let's mine deep. CBDC stands for Central Bank Digital Currency. In a world moving toward digital innovation, the concept of central bank digital currencies has emerged. But they're not the ideal solution. In fact, the existence of Bitcoin, a revolutionary decentralized digital currency, casts a compelling shadow on the feasibility of CBDCs. In simple terms, CBDCs are digital representations of a country's official currency, managed and regulated by a central bank. The idea is to provide a digital alternative to traditional cash, allowing faster transactions and increased financial accessibility, taking away your freedom while presenting convenience. However, the critical question arises, do we truly need CBDCs when Bitcoin already exists? Bitcoin operates via a secure peer-to-peer -peer network recorded on the blockchain. It's transparent, immutable, and not controlled or issued by any central authority. As a result, Bitcoin has unlocked a new era of financial independence, where individuals can store and transfer value without relying on banks or governments. In contrast, CBDCs are centralized systems where governments directly issue currency to citizens, all at the whim of their central bank. This means they cannot provide the same level of autonomy and censorship resistance that Bitcoin offers. Moreover, the implementation of CBDCs could potentially lead to concerns about surveillance, data privacy, and increased government control over individual finances. It is possible that your TV is being used as a spy, as a big brother in your living room. They will watch your every move. I mean, the CIA can already hack our televisions, smartphones, and even our antivirus softwares. So why not add our payment systems too? Another crucial aspect is scarcity. Bitcoin has a cap supply of 21 million coins, making its monetary policy inherently deflationary. This scarcity makes Bitcoin an attractive store of value, especially in times of financial hardship, low interest rates, and economic stimulus. On the other hand, CBDCs have no supply cap and may be subject to inflationary pressures similarly to traditional fiat currencies. In fact, they are fiat currencies. Don't be fooled. $8,200 in 1914 is equivalent in a purchasing power to about a quarter million dollars today. An increase of $241,000 over 109 years. The dollar had an average inflation rate of 3.3% per year between 1914 and today, producing a cumulative price increase of 2,951%. This means that today's prices are 31 times higher since 1914. Their ability to print and control the money supply has led to the devaluation of the dollar. The centralization of CBDCs could expose them to potential vulnerabilities, censorship, and cyber attacks. Bitcoin's decentralized nature, secured through cryptographic principles, has proven its resilience against hackers and central points of failure. Ultimately, the fundamental difference between CBDCs and Bitcoin lies in their philosophies. CBDCs may be a step towards digital transformation for centralized monetary systems, but they struggle to achieve the level of trust, security, and borderless accessibility that Bitcoin offers. While CBDCs aim to modernize financial systems, Bitcoin already represents a profound shift in how we perceive and use money. As the world embraces digital currencies, the unique characteristics of Bitcoin continue to shine, raising the question of whether CBDCs can truly match the transformative power of the world's first and most influential cryptocurrency. The good thing is, in September, the first anti-CBDC bill in the United States was passed out of the Financial Services Committee. American values, American values, this is what the future global digital economy needs. If not open, permissionless, and private like cash, just like cash, a central bank digital currency is nothing more than a CCP-style surveillance tool 
that can be weaponized to, oppre to oppress the American way of life. This bill prevents the Federal Reserve from issuing a CBDC directly or indirectly to individuals or maintaining accounts on behalf of individuals. So why should you care? Because CBDCs are not permissionless nor capable of being private. The central banks will be able to monitor every single transaction made by individuals. Your freedom will be stripped away. This is a new game created by the government in its agenda to further the tentacles of the surveillance state. So don't become a victim and fight for your privacy. Don't miss Cynthia Lummis backstage. All right, so how do you think that Bitcoin can change the government? It's important that Bitcoin remain something that is untethered from uh, government currency uh, and as untethered as possible uh, from government control. This allows people uh, the freedom to use their property, Bitcoin, as they see fit. Uh, and I think that that's just such a basic tenant of uh, the American uh, way of life, um, having your own property uh, and be able to make decisions about what you do with your money. And what in inspired you to do that? Like what made it click for you? Well, I'm a rancher and so we uh, make a living from the land. Uh, we take care of our property and nurture it so it can raise livestock and we market the grass through the livestock and provide food for people. So uh, that concept uh, is sort of embedded in my DNA. And that's why Bitcoin makes so much sense to me. The concept of property uh, and of nurturing what your family needs and what you want to do with your American dream with your own property, your own assets. But how are you orange filling your fellow governors and colleagues? Well, we created a uh, digital asset uh, caucus. So we're educating staffers of other members. Uh, we are holding seminars. We're going to individual offices one by one and having conversations about how to property, properly regulate uh, while allowing innovation. And so we want to find that sweet spot between consumer protection and uh, the ability to innovate. Here's a quick news recap of the week and Gary Gensler's Senate hearing. In a congressional hearing on September 27th, the chair of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, Gary Gensler, faced a series of questions and critiques about the supervision of crypto markets and his unwillingness to approve Bitcoin spot ETFs. Because you are kneecapping the U.S. capital markets with the avalanche of red tape coming out of your commission on your climate has highlighted two problems, a Gary Gensler problem and a structural flaw in the SEC. I mean, I wish the Biden administration would say you're fired. Gary stated that Bitcoin is not a security and then he refused to say that it's a commodity. Your view on Bitcoin, you've, you've made comments on this. You believe Bitcoin is, is not a security. Is that true? Well, I think the staff of the SEC have also uh, ended Prior well, I'm chair. just asking you this question. This is not a gotcha. I thought there's going to be an easy softball into harder questions. You think Bitcoin is a security? No, I think I've said this in the past that I think that it I'm asking you to answer test. my question now. This is not supposed to be hard. I know. I said it just does not meet the Howey test, which is the okay. law of the land about being so a So it doesn't meet the Howey test. Security. So therefore, it's a commodity. Is that fair? I, I, I would say it's not a security. Ahead of the hearing, all Republicans on the House Financial Services Committee sent a letter to the SEC chair, Gary Gensler, slamming the agency for its persistent failure to conduct thorough economic analysis or consider stakeholder feedback regarding its regulatory agenda. Meanwhile, lawmakers have only four days left to approve the yearly budget. If they don't, it will be the fourth time this decade that parts of the U.S. government stop working. The chief economist of Goldman Sachs thinks they won't agree in time. He says the odds of a government shutdown are now 90%. He predicts the government will stop working for about two to three weeks, starting on October 1st. Yikes. Over in UK, 
JP Morgan's British retail bank Chase will ban crypto transactions made by customers from October 16th due to an increase in fraud and scams. What's next? Them telling you how much money you can spend on gas? That's crazy. Shanghai has officially recognized Bitcoin. They said that Bitcoin is a special kind of digital money. The court recognized it as valuable and limited in quantity. This is huge, despite China's crypto ban. Madeira keeps voting orange, and President Miguel Albuquerque, a Bitcoin advocate, has won the Madeira election. As the government of Madeira and the president of the government, I believe in the future and I believe in Bitcoin. And MicroStrategy has acquired an additional 5,445 Bitcoin for an average price of 27,000 per Bitcoin. As of September 24, 2023, MicroStrategy hodls 158,045 Bitcoin, which is around $4.2 million worth. Looks like they might catch up with Coinbase because they are hold 25 billion in Bitcoin, which is actually almost 5% of all the Bitcoin in existence, just as much as Satoshi Nakamoto is thought to have mined. That's wild. Now, time for a mini celebration because Bitcoin has processed over 900 million transactions. Remember, keep stacking that Bitcoin stack.